Personally, Al, I admire your conviction. Throughout history, many men, considered great in retrospect, had to stand alone for their beliefs. Although I think Al is the first shoe salesman. <laughs> I get a woman. No man presents live from the nudie bar, the Married with Children podcast. And here are your hosts, Jerry, Justin, and Al. All right, guys, it's Friday, and we all left work, and none of us are wondering where the boss is, but we are reviewing Mary with Children Season 1, Episode 12, Where's the Boss? This first aired on June 21st, 1987. I am here with the guy who spends his paychecks at Happy Brat Toys, Jerry. What's up, Jerry? Uh... I have no money. Dude, you gotta stop with these Sailor Moons and these retro game things. You gotta get out of Happy Brat Toy. There's so much stuff, and then there's sales, and then if you sign up for the VIP membership, you get discounts, back massages, and free coffee. It's too much. No excuse. There's absolutely no excuse for you to be there all the time, but... We are here with the guy who just got back from the topless hula school. Uh, you were washed up on shore. You, you landed in the topless hula school. How was that? Uh, it was great. First, I thought I was going to die, but uh, I can't be stopped. No, you cannot. There's a very uh, important man on this show, and it's you. I hope I grow up one day to be you, Justin. Let's talk about this episode of Marrow Children Where's the boss? The near death of the Playboy owner of Al's shoe store starts Al wondering why he's never visited the store. Feeling unappreciated, Al decides to take drastic action. So, this episode starts off, Peg is actually cooking breakfast this time. She's not just flapping around a piece of plastic. And she's cooking breakfast because there's something big to celebrate. And that is that Kelly did not get held back another year. She actually is moving on with the rest of her class to the next grade. And that's a good thing because Bud was actually catching up at some point. That that was a funny line. <laughs> a couple more years and I would have caught up. <laughs> that's amazing. And it's cool because it seems like something like, uh, I've been watching The Simpsons a lot. It's like Bart, which, but it's reversed because the girl, Lisa, is the younger one and Bart's the older one. And it's funny how they always make the younger kids smarter in all these shows. Isn't that strange? Yeah. Yeah, a little bit. The oldest one's always a lost cause for some reason. Okay, Al works for Gary Shoes, as you all know, in the New Market Mall. We've never seen Gary, and Al's never met Gary, apparently. You know Gary, the guy who owns the shoe store. Well, he was in a plane that crashed into the ocean off the coast of Hawaii. Gee, everybody gets to go to Hawaii but us. <laughs> For a change you don't understand. A human life has just been snuffed out. Well, who's going to sign my paycheck? What's to sign? They just hand you a roll of nickels. <laughs> <laughs> well, it isn't anything compared to what you bring home. You know, like the swine flu you brought back from your family reunion. <laughs> so Al's pretty upset about this. And one thing he's really upset about for some strange reason, and, you know, Justin sort of wasn't exactly down with the premise of uh, the last show we reviewed, why Marcy was having those nightmares. And I got to say, guys, I'm not exactly down at all with the... Pr and I, I'm, this is not... This doesn't encapsulate my feeling on the show itself, this whole episode itself. But I'm not down with the premise of this at all. Yeah, I'm sure you're out there shooting hoops with Mr. Savings and Loan. Look, I don't know the guy who owns the bank. Who knows his boss today? Who cares? Well, I do. I'm going to meet my boss. He owes me that. I'm tracking him down. I'm going to give Gary 30 days to meet me face to face in Chicago. He's going to shake my hand. He's going to say, thank you, Al Bundy. Nice job. 
Then what if he doesn't? Then I'm going to quit. Al thinks his boss died, and his, he's so consumed with, I never met him, he never stopped by to see us at the mall, he's going to take the drastic measures that we'll get into? I mean, how did you guys feel about the premise? Like, did you think with that premise that this would be a good episode or no? I'm with you 100% on that. Like, I, I ne- don't want my higher-up, like, owner boss to come to my work. Like, that means that we're probably getting in trouble or something you know <laughs> like i want him to stay away um I, I yeah it did like first it was like he was worried about getting fired because he died i could end up unemployed here now how am i gonna pay my bills well kelly ever graduates we're gonna have a heck of a lawsuit against the board of education <laughs> we can't count on that bud <laughs> They already call us the poor Bundys. I mean, what will they call us when we have no money? Those darn poachers? Damn, what am I worried about? They're not going to fire me. I got experience. I got... But they're not going to fire me. You know what really bothers me about this death thing? Here's a guy lying dead on the bottom of the ocean, and he never even took the time to meet me. Well, I bet he's sorry now, Al. Yeah, you bet. And then when he figures out that, like, he isn't there, he's like, well, what the hell? Like, I just just don't understand how that relates to wanting to not work there. You know, I worked for this guy for years, and he never even knew that I was alive. You know, I never thought of this before, but I deserve some recognition. Everybody deserves a pat on the back every now and then. Yeah, what about me, Al? Uh, I'm sorry, honey. I was talking about people who work. (laughs) Well, now there'll be new owners that'll ignore me. Well, you know, after the family stops bereaving and all. Yeah, Al, it just, it seems out of character. Like, yeah, Al does stand up for some things. He does have some kind of weird pride moments and stuff. But this just doesn't seem like one of them. Jerry, can you blow our mind or something on this? Okay. So later on, later, okay, so later on in the episode, um, one of the mall workers says, uh, or no, Steve, it's Steve who says it. He goes, who wants to meet their boss anymore? Who cares? So this shows like a new state of mind that, that was starting to, I guess, take work on in the late 80s, early 90s, where, you know, you no longer – like had to meet your boss, but Al is still old school. And he thinks you have to meet your boss. The only way you move up is impressing your boss. Like that, those, that's just the old school way of doing things. But Steve, you know, who's younger, who's in the newer wave of things. He has a new feminist wife. He's real edgy. Um, he sees it as who cares if you meet your boss anymore, you don't have to meet the owner of the company and think about it. Have you ever like, us three have have any of y'all ever go man i hope i meet the president of whatever company i work for one day no you don't care you don't you're never ever going to meet that person and it doesn't matter because that's how it is now that's how big corporations are but it used to be even if it was a big corporation you would still meet your boss so this really shows like a huge separation between the old way of doing things and the new wave the new incoming of of the modern era and that's something the show does a lot even when we talk about how many i can't believe they said that like we said five times in the last episode this show in and itself is a revelation of the new modern world it's no longer all happiness and cosby treats now we've got uh blonde stewardess and suicide jokes all right Woo! Now we can start having that fun. That helps a little bit, Jerry, for sure. <laughs> um, now, okay. I, I still yeah, I still think the premise is kind of odd, but the only, and the only thing I can really do is it's Al going, you know what? I deserve to be noticed. I've been kicked my whole life. I deserve to be noticed, and I'm going to take it out on a dead guy because there's no repercussions from that. You, he's dead. I don't have to, I don't lose, but of course, like all his plans, it backfires. Wonderfully does it backfire. But he was like, I'm, I'm, you know, he, she, this guy's dead and he never even took the time to meet me. He can take out all his frustrations, 
on why he feels he's a belittled person on someone who's dead and doesn't matter. You, you got me halfway there. You're That's all I need, baby. Yeah, I got one foot on board, and uh, I'm about to get split off the tracks here. So We'll see if I have you by the end of the episode. So, um, Al, you know, he's upset, like we said. But, you know, they as upset as he is, they make a really hilarious and yet crazy joke that is insanely insensitive. He goes, You know, Al, maybe we should send something special to the family. Yeah. How about some scuba gear and a body bag? <laughs> ah, no, you're right, Peg. We gotta get something. You know, get something big and expensive. Yeah. No, like that was hilarious. Like this episode starts off really dark. Not only that, like his line, he's lying at the bottom of the ocean and he never took time to meet me. Like this is. <laughs> Mom, how do we know this tuna isn't Dad's boss? Because <laughs> we bought it last year. <laughs> Oh like, my god, is there any sensitivity in this house? And then, oh, man. And then right after that, uh, Peggy starts talking about, um, oh, what happens when the main bread owner, you know, dies? Honey, you have insurance, right? Like, Yeah, you have life insurance, don't you? And she goes, well, we're already considered poor. What are they going to call us when we don't have any money? And uh, or something. I didn't get that. What did that mean? Those poachers. damn poachers. Uh, poachers are people that go and like so poaching is when you sweeping in and taking. You're not allowed to. Yeah, ta- yeah, hunting game. You're not allowed to. And also, like, if you poach a sale, like if you backdoor someone's deal, like you're doing kind of shady stuff. So poaching is not looked at in a good view. Yeah. Kelly, the guys in here are naked. If I ever see anything like this in your room again, you can just kiss it goodbye. Hello. <laughs> Kelly was looking at Playtime magazine, which is male porn. And she even says these men are naked in here. If I ever catch something like this in your room again, oh my God, look at him. You know, something like that. Wow. I mean, how many, we got in trouble a couple episodes ago because we're talking about Kelly. And, you know, she's, what, 15 years old. Suddenly, that kind of stuff doesn't apply when we're talking about this daughter of this family she's 15 years old and it's just like it's so weird to even think of that I, like i don't know it's it's just especially a girl right yeah it's even weirder yeah we've already had a joke that she's lost her virginity so i mean a, a, a magazine's not a hardcore step from that but still 1987 i mean right if you found the porn magazine under bud's bed like, you know, with straight porn, that would be one thing. But yeah. the only thing you could probably go worse than finding the porn in the daughter's room is finding the gay porn in the son's room. They sent so many flowers, they'll forget all about it, Gary. <laughs> you ever think about sending me flowers, Al? Why would I do that? You're still alive. <laughs> well, they should have been delivered by now. Stay off the phone. The family will probably be calling any minute. For 300 bucks, they better. $300? Al, where did you get $300? Our vacation money. Oh, Al, I was planning on spending that on clothes. It's all right. Our future begins with Gary's death. Because he feels that if he sends flowers, they're going to go, oh, look. Oh, he works at the shoe store. You know what? Let's give this guy a raise, you know, for whatever reason. He thinks that'll happen. Uh, so he spends $300. Now, J- Jerry just asked in the last episode that we reviewed, how can Marcy actually believe that Al has $250 to go half seas on her to fix the driveway? Jerry, it turns out you underestimate Al and nobody else does because he has $300 to spend on a gesture in hopes of uh, a better future. Uh, so they that was their vacation money. I mean, I guess that was, what do you do? Three hundred dollars on vacation. Go to dinner once with. I, I don't understand this episode. Uh, uh, Peggy's cooking. They've got money saved up. Who are these people? <laughs> yeah, Kelly's passing grades. Like, what is going on here? I thought last episode was the dream episode. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is a dream. Al is actually naive enough to hover over the phone 
as if uh, it's going to ring any second once they see these amazing flowers. Because, you know, all the other millionaire people in their life, you know, they're, I'm sure those flowers won't overshadow Al's. Um, and I'm sure they're thinking about Al while their son or husband or whatever is dead. I'm sure they're going to be concerned with Al's flowers, though. All these things are happening. The doorbell rings. He picks up the phone. It's the doorbell, Al. Then the funny one was uh, the oven bell goes off. And it's funnier because it's a bell, at least, like a phone bell for just one little tiny ring. And he picks it up. And then uh, Peg says, that's the oven timer, Al. And he goes, oh, you cook something? She goes, no, it just reminds me to order food. <laughs> <laughs> Through a clown's head. No, it's kidding. I think one of the reasons we have an issue with the premise of this one is because Al's plan that he's executing is dumb. Like, it doesn't make any sense to us. It makes sense to no one because it's just a really dumb plan, as Alex just explained. Um, Sending the flowers to a millionaire who probably has other people sending him tons of flowers and that the family is not going to give him a raise when they're mourning. Like, Mm -hmm. I think... That, but I don't know if that helps the premise because if the premise is done and the the plan is done, they at least work together. Or does it hurt the premise because it makes the premise look even worse? I guess all we can really do from here is say whether or not we liked this thing at the end of it all. You know, like it's the <laughs> dumbest setup ever. I mean, this is weak stuff here. And it's amazing that we're only 12 episodes in. And we already got to a week's a week premise for a show. Mm-hmm. That would almost lead you to believe that they're sort of coasting on fumes, maybe, because it's the end of the season. Uh, they let's hope they have some ideas for season two if they're already. I'm not opposed to like having an episode where Al quits his job. I think that that I think that's why it feels so disappointing. Is like this could have been a really cool episode, right? It's just like Peggy getting a job. That could have led to so much, and Al quitting his job could have led to so much, and they both seem to not capitalize on either premise. Like, Al just sitting there in his pajamas. I mean, there are a couple good jokes, like when the daughter's friends come in, and she says, is that your dad? And he go- and she's like, no, that's uh, my my dad's in jail. No, this is my, my mom's boyfriend. So, like, that was funny to me, that uh, just the thought that Kelly would rather... Al be seen that way than as her actual father. Just because he's at home on a work day in his pajamas. Don't use my phone. Gary's widow is going to call me. Uh, no, she's not, Al. Gary's not dead. We just heard it on the news. He's alive? Are you sure? <laughs> Your boss is quite a guy, Al. A self made millionaire. He was flying his own jet, had an equipment failure, bailed out, and washed ashore at a topless hula school. <laughs> They made a litter for him out of their grass skirts and nursed him back to health. I think he's a god. So do I. Oh, gee, isn't that great news, Al? And this is when Steve brings up the, who knows their boss nowadays? Who cares? Exactly. And then he sets up his, in 30 days, I'm going to meet the boss, uh, which will be coming to Fox this summer. It'll be a great show. We now have the longest episode in the show history so far because this show takes place over like a little over a month right in this one show because it jumps immediately to the 30 day mark 29 days go by no gary bud says you know what if 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 dad's gonna lose his job i think we should cut back oddly enough all the cutbacks include kelly (laughs) all right Who put this ad in the paper? (laughs) Cheap blonde 16 looks 30. (laughs) Seeks job out of state. No reading or writing, please. (laughs) Now listen, the day that I have to get a job is the day that I walk out of this house. I feel the same way. (laughs) So 29 days go by, nothing. Um, so Al goes to the shoe store. Everybody knows about this and they have a so long Al celebration at the shoe store. Uh, that large woman in the red outfit, you guys recognize her, right? Yes. She's the very classic first fat woman to come into the shoe store. (laughs) 
I don't care what your little ruler says. I've been a seven since I graduated from high school. Well, these are sevens. The box says nine because, well, uh... Look, lady, you're a nine. I can accept it. Why can't you? You're very fresh. No, ma'am, that's impossible. Because for the last hour, I've been trying to squeeze your foot into a shoe when I really should have been easing them into the box. So no, I'd say I'm anything but fresh. By the way, you want to tell John Henry over there to give the $100 pumps a rest? Your ad says courteous service. But that's not my ad, ma'am. That's the former owner's. He was killed, tragically, on this very spot when a size nine exploded in his face. Come on, Arnold. We're leaving. I want a balloon. You've already got one. You know what? I was wondering, too. I was like, oh, that'd be cool if that was her. But I didn't obviously go back and look. So that was her? She's, she's the, I want a balloon. You've already got one. Dude, that's awesome. I love what I love 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 when shows do that. Dude, she comes back again. What? Yeah, later on. Something happens where at, I think I'm talking like later on even. I don't know. I'm not sure. But I know she comes back. I think it's around season seven even, something like that. Mm. Yeah, she must have some she must work there or something. Uh the guy from Happy Brat Toys is there and he's even saying, I don't want to meet my boss, I steal. Like what would you steal from Happy Brat Toys? You're like sixty years old, dude. Tickle me Elmos? <laughs> yeah, right? Like what are you stealing? Like if you worked in like a guns and ammo, if you worked in a liquor store, if he was doing something cool, I mean, Jerry would steal from a toy store and, and I would probably, sadly enough, because if they have some vintage toys, I'd probably steal them. Alex, maybe he's really into Jim and the Holograms. Yeah, maybe he has a total Jim and the Holograms collection that he has no shame in posting pictures of. <laughs> Standing in front of it in a Jim shirt. I don't know. But, uh, <laughs> who would do that? I have no idea. Uh, <laughs> so Al actually quits the, the shoe store. Now, Justin, did you believe that Al would actually quit or did you think that there's no way it's going down like this? Something else... I believed that he would quit the shoe store, but I thought that he would somehow work his way back into the shoe store. So but I thought this episode was extremely predictable, but that's not necessarily bad. A lot of sitcoms are, you know what I mean? So um, it's the journey. It's not necessarily the outcome that's fun. Yeah. Well, this whole episode is based on his journey. I mean, the premise sucks. The logic is out the window and that could be a good thing, but it's not really here. Uh, it's not exactly hilarious that he's quitting if he doesn't meet the guy. There's nothing funny about it. So you can't say, oh, it's a show. It doesn't need to be logical. Well, yeah, but it, where's the part where it's good, though? And like, where's the part where that part's funny? <laughs> you know, if you're going to sacrifice logic, there better be a payoff, which means a good part. So and there wasn't. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, a, a, a good part to your sacrificed logic. He really quits. He's looking in the want ads, and it's funny. Oh, hold up. Before we get into the want ads, we have to talk about his, his leaving speech. He is doing this for us, the little guys, and one large woman. <laughs> it, it, like, it's kind of funny because it makes me think that Al is like, like, is he a good shoe salesman? Is he dedicated to a useless job? Like he start, when it Because he starts doing a speech, whenever a, a a uh, shoe needs a foot and whenever Shamu meet needs a mate, you know, he'll be there. The fat lady will be there. Like it, it's kind of really funny to me, his speech and how almost dedicated he seems to this job that he hates. Or to this, this movement of ridiculousness that he just conjured up. Well, I believe that just because uh, it's a long, long way away. But there's an episode where they're like in the, the in the car for the entire episode, and he does this whole like getting everyone all like excited who stopped with him in this traffic, and how they're gonna like go start tearing apart the street, like so he just does that. He'll take the most useless thing and turn it into this to a uh, riot that's about to form. Uh, well, see that's funny though, sitting in traffic and the because we could all relate to that. That's that's the difference. This this whole thing, no one relates to it. I think that's where you're losing us. You know, if you're going to make Al have something like that, I mean, maybe it's funny that we don't relate to it. Maybe 
sometimes it's good to cash in on the idea that he's so old that he has these ideals that we just don't get because we're all you know of the newer generation we're not baby boomers or whatever they're called uh and stuff like that so maybe that's funny too speaking of relating do you guys have any stories of when you quit a job or anything I quit a job to – I only quit jobs to go to better ones. I never really just quit a job, no. You know, one time I did quit uh, – like I I had le- I had moved out of Georgia because the house in the ghetto I was living in got completely smashed in and half our stuff stolen. I, I, I told that story on the podcast. Um, and then I went to Florida to live with my mom and try to re-figure out what was going on. And I was only there for like – Less than a month, but I had a job at Hot Topic, and one day I just woke up and I called uh, Kenneth, and I was like, "Um, just come get me. Just drive, you know, five hours and come get me. And sure enough, he drove five hours, picked me up, I packed up all my stuff, called Hot Topic, and was like, I won't be there anymore, and just left and went back to Georgia. So Hot Topic sucked, huh? No, Hot Topic w- wasn't actually that bad. I mean, it's a lot of folding clothes. <laughs> oh, my God. But I got to control the music, so I got to, like, skip stuff I hated and play what I wanted. So so you're the guy putting all the garbage shit in Hot Topic. <laughs> oh, yeah. If you come in there, you better expect to hear some, like, screamo and post-hardcore. Yeah, That's man. all you're getting. <laughs> well, Al really quits. He's looking in the Wan ads, and... It's weird because we always think to ourselves, well, I do, maybe I just think everybody does, but that it's so hard to get a job now, and yet it was so easy back in the 80s and stuff, and yet they treat it as if it was just as hard then to get a job. He was going to have to stoop as low as this cheap blonde. Yeah, yeah, because he couldn't, uh, he didn't go to college, and uh, he has no computer skills, and and they capitalize on that a few seasons down, but yeah. And he didn't go into his dad's line of work. Now, what does dad do for a living again? His dad reset bowling pins. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, can you imagine before they had those machines that this they used to have a guy. I'm not judging people for what they do for a living, but man. Imagine your job is to sit behind a deck of bowling pins. And every time the guy who, who paid for bowling throws the ball at him you gotta set them back up well first of all you gotta not get hit right i want to know what the safety precautions for that job were and how many times they just had to deal with like some asshole teenager <laughs> that thought he was in greece and was gonna throw the ball while he's setting it yeah up. throw the ball while he's setting it up because he's got his t-bird jacket on and he don't <laughs> care probably a lot of times hello, hello. hello. Brought you some leftovers, vegetarian fajitas, and tofu croquettes. Now, don't get the wrong idea, Al. We are not doing this because you're out of work. It's just a coincidence. We happen to make too much. You'd really be doing us a favor to take it off our hands. Ah, who are we kidding? It's charity. (laughs) Oh, how you doing, buddy? Enjoying your first day out of work? Ooh, ooh, nice pajamas. <laughs> Unemployment's really agreeing with you, big guy. Well, it all comes down to priorities. What's more important, pride or money? Money, Al. <laughs> I love it. I love to look at it and be around it and count it. That's why I went to the bank biz. But that's me and you're out of work. <laughs> but hang in there. There's plenty of work for a man with your qualifications. Did you ever try to uh, shoe a horse, Al? <laughs> you no, know, you are tall enough to be goofy at Disney World. <laughs> of course, you'd have to relocate, but uh, they have real nice trailer parks down there. You're enjoying yourself, aren't you, Steve? <laughs> Remember what you did to my dog, Al? <laughs> yes, I do. To continue, then, you could get yourself some flowers and sell them at the expressway off-ramp. Now, Steve. Oh, can't I do one more? Well, okay. You could sell your blood, Al. They give you juice and cookies afterwards. Gee, Al, if you could manage to stagger home without spilling the juice, that would be dinner for the family. And you're almost like, dude, what is with the viciousness? Like, oh. what, did Al just kill your mother or something? Then you find out, oh, this is all residual 
uh, effects of when Al popped Steve's dog right between the eyes in the middle of a bowel movement. I like that callback. I was like, okay. I love that stuff, man. Did yeah. did y'all like the callback that was right before it, it of of Peg watching the game show and spelling out newspaper and getting like really excited about that being a callback to her previously watching game shows, getting them all wrong. Yeah, getting them all <laughs> wrong. Uh, you're right. Steve comes over. He really gives him some hardcore stuff. But I gotta ask when he's like, "Oh, who are you kidding? It's charity." What's more important to y'all, pride or money? Like Steve says, money. Alex, pride or money? Um, well, it depends. I mean, what are you asking me to do for the money? I mean, if you ask me to perform a sexual act on a guy, then I'm going to say pride. If- <laughs> See, I'm going to, it depends on how much money. A little bit of mouthwash, it'll be all <laughs> oh my right. God. But okay, okay, we'll put you in the same situation. You said you were going to do something if this didn't happen. Okay. And it, and so it did happen, and you had to – you were forced to leave. Right. I would say, well, I took a stand. It didn't work out. That It is what it is, but I, I got two kids. I got a mortgage. So I'm here. I You know, I, the guy called my bluff. What are you going to do? At least I stood up for something. And then I'd end it there. So money – and you, you use uh, a fake sense of pride to justify your pride. Justin. How about you? Uh, initially, I would have been like, all right, I guess I got to quit now because I said I would. But the way that Alex put it, I just stole that speech because uh, if I was anybody, I'd be like, oh, all right. <laughs> you know well, what I mean? So good my job, whole, Alex. <laughs> yeah, my whole podcasting career is plagiarizing Alex, so that <laughs> works out. Because uh, I, I was just curious if, if either one of y'all would be like, nope, too much pride. Like Especially Alex. He's like part Italian or something. So, like, there's a lot of, like, Italian pride there. Yeah, there is, but this is real life. I got kids to feed, damn it. <laughs> right, like, and, and, and you know what it is also? We're talking about a dumb premise again. Do you think I could relate to this? Again, I can't relate That's to That's another it. key thing is Keep I would never say something stupid like that in the first place. Okay. Right, so you're asking me a question based on stupidity, so I'm not going to go with the pride. So, something completely relatable. Relatable. Like what? Like what? what if you had done what Dave Z did, called out Friday the Thirteenth, and then it actually happened, and and he, you had to quit podcasting because you said that? Would you just be like, all right, guys, I was I was wrong. Take take the pie on the face or egg on the face, whatever it is, and keep podcasting, or would you be like, I guess I'm done? Dave Z wouldn't have quit podcasting anyway, so <laughs> yeah, he ain't quitting either. By the way, I can make that movie tomorrow, and he'll still be here next year. Uh-huh. I've I've I've. I hope there's going to be a bucket involved, Alex. <laughs> yeah, well, hey, if Jason gets hit in the head with a red bucket, then you know it's a good movie. Okay, I just wanted to bring up, if you said it wasn't relatable, I wanted to bring up one that was relatable to us because we all do podcasting. I'll give you a relatable one, and not even podcasting. Let's keep it real life. If I got a chance to be in a movie and Victor Salvo is directing it, I would uh, I'd say, no, I'm not working with him. Alex, this is your one big chance. He's doing a Friday the 13th movie. I, I'd i probably just say, yeah, well, I'll talk to the producers and stuff, and I'll tell them my stance on it. Maybe they'll see my plight, and they'll even agree with me and get someone else. Otherwise, I guess I won't be in it. I, I'm with you on that, because I, I wouldn't be involved in it either. That I don't care how much money is involved with it. unless and The only way I would do it is if I can be like, okay, what fun can we set up to help the victim? Like, can part of the profits or, you know, something like that go to the victim? And even then, they pr- it probably wouldn't be enough for me to do right. it because I, I just I just could Like, it's not – but I don't even feel like that's a pride thing. That's a moral thing. Okay, well, then this – I just can't – sorry, I can't come up with a good premise. <laughs> just, just like the writers of this episode. <laughs> so uh, Bud's friend comes in, Teddy, not Joey. We've heard about Joey a lot, but unfortunately we never got to meet Joey to this point. Teddy, who looks like the most white trash kid in the world, and he clearly is because his dad uh, teaches three-card Monty, and it helps them. Even though they're on welfare, they get tons of cash. Al goes back to work. He crawled back like they all said he would. There's like these mall security guards, these old dudes. It is hilarious. I mean, even today the joke still works. Like, 
you know, he's on the walkie-talk and he's like... Have you seen any sign of a rich guy in the parking lot? A helicopter, a plane, a guy in a suit, anything. Let me check. <clears throat> Ahead. You see the rich guy coming? I can't quite hear you. Some guy in a ski mask just set off his car alarm trying to get in. <laughs> They must have ran out of bags at the jewelry store. Yeah, they're carrying them out in their hands. Bunch of jewels. By the way, how how awesome is it that they made two Happy Brat Toys t-shirts for this episode? <laughs> yeah, isn't that cool? It seems like it's really lived in. Like, it seems like they didn't just make it up for that show. Yeah, mm-hmm. they pay attention. And I also like that Al was only out of work for one day. Yeah, that's it. Big stance. Well, possibly more if if because I if he was he had like two days scheduled off, maybe he took the whole weekend. But I'm assuming it was one day. That's really gonna hurt his paycheck. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it's, it's gonna be seventy five cents less. So uh, I think they even say after one day he's back. That fat lady said that. They all come back to mock Al's lack of pride, just putting him down. The loser he is. Blah blah blah. For some reason, Peg and the kids are there. I've, oh, oh, because they were going to meet up for lunch, which Al's going to pay for. Hey, Al, isn't she the one that got wedged in the escalator? <laughs> you must be the wife. And you must be why they're starving in China. <laughs> All of a sudden, Gary comes in. You know, Al, he finally gets his, his way. Al, uh, Gary comes in. Looking all fancy, looking like the playboy millionaire he is. Is Al Bundy around? Over there. Uh, another spectator. <laughs> Go ahead, take your shot. Well, I'm not sure what you're talking about. I just want to meet Al Bundy and shake his hand. Just who are you? Gary, Gary Patterson. You know, I, I own this place. <laughs> <laughs> Gary? How are Gary from Gary's Shoes and Accessories for Today's Woman? <laughs> I'm Al Bundy. You know something? I got your letter and it really affected me. After years of sleeping with beautiful women and living life just for fun, I, uh, I thought I would come back to the trenches, say thanks, and then get back to the beach. You know, I know a great beach over at my house. Uh, Gare, as you might have guessed, this is the wife. <laughs> Hit the showers, babe. Al? I want you to know I appreciate what you're doing here. One day I would like to have you on my yacht. Of course I won't. <laughs> but I want you to know that the next beautiful woman I bed down is dedicated to you. Could you make it a blonde? <laughs> they make life worth living, don't they? <laughs> I wouldn't know. He says the next girl I bed down, and I'll go and I'll ask him, can you make it a blonde? Which to me is hilarious. Because of two episodes beforehand. Oh, yeah. The blonde wig. Like, that was a great, huh. like, like I will say one thing. This ending is spot on. From as soon as as he comes back to work, when the kids arrive and Kelly's like, this shoe is ugly. And Bud's like, oh, that's not the shoe. That's just your reflection. When uh, the ocean walks, I meant when the, when the fat lady in the blue shirt walks in, Peggy starts ripping her apart. Like, Peggy gets savage on her. Yeah, she sticks up for Al when this stuff happens with the fat ladies. You should be proud, kids. There's a very special man in there, and he's talking to your father. <laughs> you see, Daddy really does count. And then going into the back room, and we find out the real secret. 23? 24? 25. Now, the deal was for 50, Al. And then worth every penny. They really thought you were Gary, Nick. Hey, I've got alimony. I'll do anything for money. <laughs> Six. 27. The real secret is, guys, that uh, Al, not only is he out a day's pay, but he's also out a few extra bucks because, uh, oh, and he's also out $300. Man, if you add up. $350 because he paid the guy 50 bucks. Okay, so Al is out $351 because he missed a day's pay. Oh, I'm sorry. We didn't include that. $350.75. That's it. Yeah, that's the total that Al lost throughout all his misfortunes in this episode. Which equals out to be $749.79 
with inflation. Wow. Al lost almost 800 bucks on this whole scenario. <laughs> like, how crazy is that? Dude, he can't, like, he can't afford to be losing all his money all the time. <laughs> uh, so, it uh, turns out that Gary is not really Gary. Gary is really his buddy, Nick, who just looks the part, knows how to act pretty well, and he has, uh, what is it, alimony to pay off? He's got alimony, and he'll do anything for money. Yep, so Al pays him to make believe he's Gary and to come into the shoe store and do everything that Al told everybody he wanted done. So in the end, Al just completely wasted all his time and money on this nonsense. Yeah, I have I have a big problem with that because why not just have him come in before the 30 days is over? I wonder. I wondered that too. And guess what? When I I, I kind of remembered the ending, so when I was watching it, I actually believed. You know, they made a big point of pointing out that it's day twenty nine. Mm-hmm. I thought for sure when Al was at his so long Al party that Gary was going to just walk in. Yeah. Al walks out of the door and just leaves. And I was like, well, what am I not remembering about this? And then. It turns out that he actually quit for one day. Why? Why not just come up with this idea a day earlier? All right, let me step in here. Okay. So, we've seen in the show before that when Al sets his mind to do something, he does it to the full extent up till even up till the last minute where failure is obviously about to happen, he still does it. And that that's just how he he has so much confidence in when he sets his mind to do something he's gonna do it and we'll see this a lot in the future, and and that's what happened. But when Al does lose, he does tend to have a way to figure out some way to come back, and that's what we see in this one. So yeah, it, you would think that he would have you know faked this on day thirty, but he had so much confidence that it would happen. So much confidence in himself and that it would happen. He went for it and and only figured out to pay someone once he knew he had failed. Wow. Goes along with all the dumb the other dumb decisions he's made in this episode that he didn't do it on day 30. Yeah. Well, yeah, it's all dumb. The whole thing is dumb. Uh, and the, the writer of this is Marcy Vosberg Sandy. Sp- why did you why did you let Marcy write this? Of course Al failed, and he failed because another man was supposed to get him. These two writers, I, I, we, I would love to see if they wrote anything else that that we enjoy. <clears throat> they wrote uh, Al Loses His Cherry. Wow. How weird that they completely missed the mark on this one, but they, they hit my favorite one. And they well, ra- wrote uh, Whose Room Is It Anyway, also from season one. And that was great. Wow. This makes no sense. Thank you for that insight, because that makes no sense. Like, man, <laughs> those, those are like third times a charm. No Man will be right back to wrap up this week's review. Be sure to join their Facebook group page for all the podcast news and updates. Just type in www.facebook.com slash groups slash Married with Children podcast. Be sure to subscribe to them on iTunes and please leave a review telling them what you think of the show. To subscribe to their YouTube channel, just go to Channels and search up Married with Children Podcast. You can email them at marriedwchildrenpodcast at gmail.com. Thanks for checking out this review. Now the guys are going to give their final thoughts and ratings of this week's episode. All right, guys, time to rate this episode, Where's the Boss? Uh, all right, Justin, how many body bags out of five are you sending Gary's family for this episode? All right, so you guys might want to shoot me, but I've been thinking for a long time on on what an average episode of Married with Children looks like. And technically, the average episode is a good episode. So I'm like, well, that doesn't really work. But I'm just saying an average episode is as in quality, like average, meaning like just okay. I think this I finally found it. This is the one where I just found like felt like it wasn't 
too much of anything. I, I really just wasn't down with the premise from the beginning. And um, even Jerry's um, typical like mind blow that didn't have enough of effect for me to change my rating. Um, there are funny moments, and like Jerry pointed out, when they do start with the zingers on like the fat lady and stuff like that, and you know, I got a o- ocean at my house or something. You know, it, it's kind of funny, um, but I just felt like it was a little too late, and there was. You know, it's just, I just wasn't down with the premise to begin with. So I'm coming in at 2.5 out of 5 body bags for, um, what was his name? Where's the boss? Where's the boss? <laughs> for, for Gary's family. For, for Gary's I, family. I was wondering who was going to be the first person to rate an episode under three. Right. <laughs> That's, this is a landmark show. This is the first episode. Okay, if anybody doesn't know our rating system, we're basically, we stole Netflix. One, two, three, four, or five out of five. Now, one means hated it, two means didn't like it, three means liked it, four means really liked it, and five means loved it. So, Justin just rated it a 2.5, so he's between didn't like it and liked it. This is an episode he will pretty much always skip. He doesn't need this episode. He'll never watch this again. Yep. I'll say that I don't really watch it a lot either. This is probably my fifth time watching it. With my favorite episodes, I've seen them well into 30 times. Easy. And and that that's telling, too, especially for me, to that it's that low. But I, uh, uh, first, let's get to... Uh, Jerry, how many body bags out of five are you sending Gary's family? You know, much like Marcy in this episode, I admire uh, Justin's uh, standing up for his conviction and and doing this under a three. But I'm still going to give it a three. Um, While, yeah, the premise is bad, Al has a very bad plan, I think this episode is saved by dialogue. Peggy was shining at the end of this episode. Steve's bit was great. I I have like a huge thing just on Steve's bit that I didn't even go into because I liked it so much. And uh, the kids' banter was solid. Um, this to me is a a married with children episode. Al dreams of a up a, a big scheme. It fails and backfires. His pride takes a hit, but he figures out a way to cheat the ending. After all, like. This, to me, is an episode where I will always say, yes, the plot was stupid, the premise was stupid, but the dialogue was great. This is like the Suicide Squad of of Married with Children episodes. It was kind of, the plot's just dumb, but that dialogue was so good. So three out of five, just because the dialogue to me was actually better than a few episodes I've rated a three. Right. Uh, Okay. I give this, believe it or not, uh, Justin, 3.5 body bags out of 5 I'm sending that family because, you know, it didn't sound like I was going to say this. As stupid as the premise is, like I kind of hinted with earlier, I said, but let's see how we enjoy it at the, in the, you know, at the end of it all. Jerry's totally right. I mean, the dialogue, it just keeps working. The callback to the dog episode... The, the kids coming in with their friends and looking it out and the jokes there. You got the jokes with the security guards. You got the jokes in the shoe store. You got um, the, the, the killer jokes in the beginning. Like the, it, it was one after another, after another, after another. Till you, even got, till you got to the stupid. Like even with what we're braiding this with, body bags. You know, like the, the <laughs> scuba gear and body bags. Like... Everything about this episode is great, except for the entire plot. You know, I got to be honest with you. I didn't even like until y'all started talking about it. It didn't even click in my mind that the premise and the plot were bad at all. Like until y'all said it to me and I was like, oh, oh, hell, they're right. This this is kind of a stupid premise. I just enjoyed the episode. I went along for the ride and didn't think about it. And I think that's like. I didn't have a mind blow answer for you this time because I didn't even see it. So you just put me on the spot and I just kind of ran with it. So to be honest, I didn't even see it as a bad premise to begin with until y'all pointed it out to me and y'all were right. Yeah, I mean, that happens though. Like when you're doing a show like we're doing here, that's going to happen. You know, uh, we're not just watching it 
on on a couch with a, a beer and a pizza or whatever and just laughing or talking to her. Wait, we're not? Before, yes, I did watch <laughs> this on a couch with a beer and a pizza. No, but, uh, but we're, what I'm saying is um, what we're doing here is we're not leaving it there. We're not just watching it and leaving it there. Mm-hmm. When we have to talk about things, we have to sort of look at them differently and critique. Uh, as much as we're here to relive the magic that we love this show um, – and you re- are living. That's what I love about our perspectives. Our perspectives are perfect for the show. Me being the psycho who is obsessed with the show to some degree, you knowing almost nothing, and Jerry coming from a very casual, general type person viewpoint of the show. That's what's so great about it. We all get to come together and share these perspectives. So I love that you gave it a 2.5 because that's. That's great that you see it that way. Someone who's more attached like me or somebody who's like sort of invested like Jerry, we're going to see it differently. So that's cool. You have to dance around it and the the floor could fall out under you if the plot's really bad. But it's not that bad to the point where that happened here. So it's just stupid to me. We're going to discover these things when we're analyzing a show like that you know that's just gonna happen sometimes and it's gonna happen to see even some of our favorite episodes one of us might just say say something bam whoops wow didn't even notice that you know that's just gonna happen uh like i said the four the 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 floor didn't fall out underneath the episode it still made it through great ending great punch at the end and that guy nick was a great actor i mean he really came (laughs) off as a millionaire playboy he did yeah and i want to say you know what Thank you, Justin, for for being brave enough to score this under a three, because I just sitting here thinking about it, I'm like, man, the first time I have to score an episode under a three, that's that kind of scares me. Me too. I, I, you know, definitely, definitely, because it, it's such a good show. And you guys are right. Like, like the, the lines, the jokes, they're there. I don't think that's going to go away at all. So I'm looking at like what is if that's always there, then what separates the average, you know, between liked it and didn't like it episodes from the liked it episodes? Dad, that's I mean, that's a really good point. Well, we've had the Facebook members. Oh, guys, join our Facebook group page. Get in on the action, man. We we post our show and we all talk about our our podcast on the episode. And we talk about the episode itself on that same post. So you guys can come in and say, hey, this is what I thought of it. And then we'll even respond there and we can interact on it and really live out the whole episode the whole week before the new show comes out. So we could, there's, there's more than just listening to this show. There's an interaction that goes down. It's a real fun time. So join the Facebook group page. But one guy who is on the Facebook group page, he was mentioning how uh, he didn't like uh, what was the episode? He didn't, he didn't like, um, I think the poker, yeah, the poker game episode because he said episodes don't work when Al is coming out on top and winning all the time. The show works best when Al is down and out. That's the, uh, here he is, uh, Don Anelli. You know, he was saying that, um, and it, like the focus was off and this, that, the other thing. There wasn't many laugh out loud moments, you know, things like that. So there are things that people pick up on that just don't give the show a three out of five. There are things that are going to be lacking. And just like you said, Justin, the other uh, a couple shows ago, you you really didn't care for the episode that focused on Peg. Peggy Sue got work. Yeah. Like there are going to be things that you don't even know are coming that you're not going to dig. And you're going to give it a 2. Or hopefully it doesn't go less than 2.5. But it might. Alright guys, turns out I was wrong in that video I made. That uh, season 1 wrap up show video I made. So everybody can participate in our season 1 wrap up show. I said that this week was the last episode of season 1. It turns out next week is. Uh, We are going to review the episode called Johnny Be Gone. When his favorite hamburger joint closes, Al must choose between family and food. So that's going to be the last episode of season one that we review. 
That will also be released on Friday. After that, we will release our Season 1 wrap-up show on Friday as well. From there, we're going to start Season 2 on our new time slot, which is Wednesdays, guys. So after we're done with the Season 1 wrap-up show, expect every show to come out on Wednesday. We're going to break up the week. We're going to really make Hump Day something to look forward to. Hey, Jerry, do you know who owns this place? Like, where the owner is? No, I don't. But you know what? Alex said he met him.